Scott, first of all, as we look ahead to tomorrow's game, how do you prepare for the opponent? For example, you had the luxury of going to Kosovo to suss out what would eventually be our opponent, Veronica Kelly, then of course Copenhagen. How do you prepare for this game? Um, very much the same in terms of looking at the um, analysis side of um, the, the football club. Do you research on the players and the surroundings and how often they've been in Europe how many times they've won the league they've consistently won it eight times in a row similar to us you look at they've been in the European group stages they've been Champions League they're used to playing in European competition um, seeing the two games they had against Ferenc Faros very tight games 2-1 um, they lost and 3-2 but in the home game against Ferenc Faros they uh, missed a penalty at 2-1 which would have brought them back into the tie and then um, would have certainly given them more hope but Good side, excellent players, squad, ro uh, squad rotation, um, very big squad. They, they've been playing a totally different side in the league than they have in Europe. So it shows that that strength and depth, they haven't took their eye off the ball in, in the league or in Europe. They've, they've sort of saved their, their strongest uh, team for European competition by the looks of it. So we've done our homework on that. Didn't manage to come out and see them live, but that was just down to time constraints and obviously going out to Copenhagen. And then obviously we knew that we had another away tie um, only six days later or seven days later or whatever it was. So not time, not much time to prepare, but we've done our own preparation in terms of the players we're going to come up against and obviously where we're going to be playing, and etc. Luda Goretz do go into the game as strong favourites with the book is, but back to the new Saints now, the away performance in Copenhagen in particular was a pleasing one for you as the manager, so lots of positives looking ahead to tomorrow. Very much so, I thought the players were fantastic, they, uh, you know, they coped uh, you know, really, really well against a strong outfit, strong European outfit like we talked about, they, um, they passed the ball well at times through that middle third of the pitch, thought we were excellent. In the final third, that's where um, we just against these teams we just fall in at the final hurdle but defensively and in the middle third I thought we coped really well and we're always going to defend well because we stick together and we we um, you know we don't want to concede goals it's the other end when that little bit of class um, is there to be told and that final pass or the, or the shot but even though over the last few games we've we've peppered their goal um, at times we haven't really made the keeper work uh, Brobs had a great chance in the last game you know, if that goes in it's a different story it would have been us going in 1-0 ahead they're the fine lines they're the fine margins and, and that's unfortunately where we, we didn't um, get an away goal last game but however you know not disappointed with the performance not disappointed with the result 3-0 uh, over two legs against Copenhagen um, you know there's nothing to be sniffed at and I thought the lads were very well uh, very competent overall and we all know the importance of confidence going into any game. And it's true to say that the team spirit, the bonding yeah. that you have with the squad at the moment is excellent. That's right. And the more you go away and spend time with each other, um, you know, some of the newer players getting to, get to know the other boys. And it's, it's good. We obviously, we obviously eat together and we're travelling together. A lot of travelling yesterday. You know, we, most of the day was taken up yesterday by travelling. So, um, you know, they, they gel, they... they probably talk to different players that they wouldn't normally do at the, at the football club and um, you, can, you can see that the, there's, a, there's a strong bond between the players. The Bulgarian league has already started so they have a big game coming up, well, they're all big games of course, but they have a big game coming up on Sunday. You've already mentioned squad rotation but the fact that this game is at home for Luda Goretz, do you feel that that in some way puts perhaps more pressure on them to get that result? I think so. If you look at them going into the game, and like you've already rightly said, that they're very big favourites um, against us. But you know, we've been uh, underdogs before. That doesn't really trouble us. We're going to be underdogs. There's not many teams that um, you know we're above in the coefficient. So you know, when you when you come to Bulgaria, Hungary, uh, Poland, uh, you know, wherever you go, Denmark, they're all going to be bigger favourites than us. They've all got more more money to spend. They're the, they're the facts. We don't worry too much about that. We're glad to be here. Um, we've proved that we're worthy of being here, being opposition here. So um, it's a test for us. It's a, it's a test for the players. We're not used to losing. We're used to winning the majority of our games. Um, so I just look at it as a, as a big test for us early on in the season that will stand us in good stead for the rest of the season and 
let's stand up to it. Like I said to the boys, stand up to the test of Copenhagen and, and go toe to toe with them. Go on, go there. Um, you know, make sure that you're uh, as good as them on the night. If you're as competitive, as strong, and, and you can run as hard as them and, and work as hard as them, why, why not get an upset? Just like tomorrow evening, you know, um, the underdog sometimes does win, and why, why can't that be us? We, we talk about it all the time. Uh, third round of the Europa, you know, the Europa qualification. There's not going to be any bad teams in it at this point, so um, we're glad we're here and we're uh, we're fighting on all fronts. And however you look at it, we are just two ties away from the group stages of the Europa League. That in itself is a massive motivation factor for you, the staff, and of course, most importantly, for the players. You look at it and you're, do you want your season to continue in Europe or do you want to go back to your domestic league and start that? You know, I know what I would want and what the percentage of the players would want because it gives you um, not just uh, game time and and preparation against the biggest teams in Europe it also gives the, the club money in which to strengthen and to, and to build upon you know these are all things that um, you know are important and imperative to, to our growth as a football club so you know we're, we're here like I've just said we're here and we want to be part of it and, and the more that we continue to develop hopefully um, we'll get there and finally, Scott, we have seen players come back from injury in recent weeks, noticeably Blake Hudson, who made an appearance last week in Denmark. Are we likely to see any surprises as far as the starting 11 is concerned, or is that a case of wait and see? Yeah, we always wait and see. We don't give anything away the day before because of anything can happen. Keston last, uh, last week fell to illness, um, and he, he didn't even leave the hotel, so... I don't tend to like to um, put the team out the day before in case anything happens. But we've we've got um, a plan in our mind. We've got the team in our mind. Um, you know, Blaine hasn't started a game since May the third, whatever it was, uh, Welsh Cup final. It's a long time. You know, all of June, all of July, half of August. So it's one where we've we thought about it. We are thinking about it, and we've got to make the right decision for the team.